Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. In furtherance of my Nigeria at 60 series, I search for the honest amongst us in what I title Wanted a Righteous Nigerian. Fellow advocate Seydou Bishara once said, if religion were a currency, African nations would be the wealthiest of all. What is baffling is that despite this assertion, the dishonest and mockers of the honest are in multitudes. Japan sings the praises of a Nigerian PhD student who returns a lost purse. The Nigerian government recognizes him at home for being honest. Individuals fall over themselves to congratulate him. Good script, right? Wrong. From John Weke in Japan to Achi Daniel, Francis Emekwako, security guards at Mutala Mohammed International Airport, to random cab drivers, the soldier who returned $41,000, and Joseph Unugu, a cleaner at the same MMIA, who claimed she had returned different amounts of money running into millions, and who particularly wanted recognition for it. The furore hard desire generated on Twitter was both interesting and disturbing for a nation with a religious culture like ours. We celebrate one honest man or woman as if we're saying, wow, look at that righteous one in a nation of rogues. We celebrate Nigerians who return lost money so vigorously when it should be the exception not to do that, given our religiosity. Our corrupt status is legendary, in spite of the huge worship centers of the major faiths across the country. On WhatsApp platforms nowadays, religion is a big issue. We inundate everywhere with piety when we lack character, majorly. The Omolu Abi philosophy in Yoruba land transcends religious affiliation. And Omolu Abi is expected to display humility, good-naturedness, bravery, diligence, honesty, among others. And Omolu Abi must give to his community in words, deeds, and in action. It is similar to Aristotle's theory of virtue ethics that sees moral virtues as the basis for the common good. The Greeks have a similar concept that determines the morality and immorality of an act in the society. We can't keep dozing on opium. As they say, religion is the opium of the people. We need to come clean. We need a collective rehab from the superficiality of religion to its practicality. The law of awareness is setting in steadily in many quarters across this country. People are beginning to see that religiosity is taking us no anywhere. John C. Maxwell says the first step towards change is awareness. I am therefore advocating that we normalize honesty and make finding huge sums of money a culture and not an exception. This is a task for us, the people, to build this nation. Pastor. Uh, Bolahan and uh, Chief, uh, <laughs> Chief. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Pastor misses. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know we are we are a country of highly religious people, but less godly. Mm. Um, so, and that's why um, this morning I was discussing with a friend, um, Suleiman Alede, and um, he he said there are troubles everywhere. Uh, there are problems everywhere. Once you solve one, another one would raise ugly head. And I said, yes, these are messages we should be preaching in our religious centers. Instead of uh, giving the impression that, oh, once you are you know, religious, you know, all your problems are solved. And mm -hmm. so if the problems are not solved in this center, then move to the next one. That's why you see people jumping from church to church, looking for that God that is you know, right there Elusive, with them. Elusive. It is the same thing. I once had a friend who was into a schoolmate, though, who left school. You know, was one of those boys that embraced them. Um, 
419, and then he became big. While we were searching for a job, he already had an apartment, living big, you know, sometimes we we'll go to his house. He has a corner where he smokes in their hand. And then, but he had one very big Bible, and he sits in front in the church. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, you know what? Imagine. I pay my tithes regularly, mm -hmm. and that's why God is blessing me. And I looked at him, and I said, so you pay your tithe from fraudulent money, and then you think, he said, yes, that's what his pastor told but him, and that, that, that the pastor, that, you know, they don't joke with him in his church. In one of these Pentecostal churches, I don't want to mention their names. But you know, like it them. happened back then. Some bank, bank, bank uh, leaders at that time were the big guys in a certain yes, church. Yes, Akibola was the one, one of the biggest guys in Redeem. So we shouldn't hide it. Uh -huh. You know, it's a notorious And then we fact. know what happened at the end you know, of the day. So, it's, it's, it's so there. that's why you have people who rather, well, that's why you chase, we chase after money. Even culturally, long, like those that, I remember growing up, mm. you go to Lagos and six months down the line, you bring a car. Your father won't allow you into his house. What did you do? How did how you get did you how make did you this get money? money? I know what it takes to buy a car, but today you just left which it's, day and it's, yeah. it's totally now, different now. But now <laughs> they will give you Chief Tessie title. Ah. They I, celebrate I, I, you. I, I listened to a, a testimony some years ago in a church, a Pentecostal church as well. And the person was talking about her brother who went to Malaysia and I started sending home cars. And my friend just looked at me. He said, Your brother is a thief. <laughs> Your brother but is here a you thief. are. There were people who were already clapping and thanking God for, for, for the miracle of brother went to Malaysia and started sending cars. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe Aisha has uh, <laughs> Aisha must have something opinion. for us. <laughs> well, uh, I think Levi said it all. We are a religious uh, but God, uh, godless nation. Uh, so for us, it's about the religiosity, you know, doing it, the showmanship of faith. So we did this religious, competi uh, relig uh, religious competition, uh, which religion is more than and everything, and we forget that, you know, the godly part of, of, of it all. And I think one of the things we need to understand is that we have religious leaders. I call them religious slave owners. These are people who continuously need slaves. Are under them, so they would do anything, and they sell this gospel of prosperity. If you come to my place, either my church or my mosque or something, then you, you, you're going to be prosperous. Those who don't come in are the ones that, that don't have it. We seem to forget as a, uh, as a people that the greatest miracle that God gave us is our brain, and we need to use it. So people are waiting for you know for 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 this miracle to to come and happen. But, you know, talking about the issue of uh, being righteous or being honest, there are a lot of good people. There are a lot of honest people in Nigeria. It's just that we, it, it, it's the tyranny of a, a minority. We have minorities that are vocal who have come to a place whereby they're the ones who are celebrating their corruption, they're celebrating their wrongdoing to the extent that the, the incorruptible ones, the ones who are doing the right thing, the ones who are doing things with integrity are being shamed in our society and we need to do something about it. So it's a vocal, it's a vocal minority that we have out there. But I think for me, one of the things, and I totally agree, Nigerians need to re reduce their religiosity. We need to tone down on it. It's not about carrying this religion on our head. Like I always say to people, I don't want you to tell me what religion you are. Let me see it in your action. Yeah. Let's, that's the reason why we don't make demands. So we sit down, we're praying, and I always say that it seems as if Nigerians think that they have the patent to pray us. We refuse to do what we need to do. We are praying to God. Like the other day, we saw a video of uh, uh, a, a group of people who were actually praying for a transformer that is Paul. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I want to see somebody, somebody pray for you know, a woman that is Paul. That woman, that, 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 that very fat woman. I mean, are you guys Pastor okay? Was saying, you people think that this you way, own I God. You you Jesus Jesus God. I, I, I totally agree. Please, we need to just carry. Everybody should make ready for their personal business. I don't want to know exactly. where you it's are, a personal which religion thing. you are. It's a personal uh, thing. Do it. It's your relationship with God. After all of us, now, now, now different graves will enter at it. When we reach there, we go see as the team. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> receive your healing now. Yeah, receive it. <laughs> the end sick. always seems to come too soon on The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng or on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa.com slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa till next week same time 
on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Aisha, bye. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.